Yeah, yeah, I don't think you did the first section of notes. Well, I did all of the three eight sections. Did you set those notes out? Good. 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 What's crazy? I, I don't think you did the original ones and then like now you have the ones for the end of the week but not the beginning. Okay, Zai King and Isaac, you guys ready? We're going to go ahead and solve by a different method today. So if you look at our standards up on the board, they're the same as last week. 3 4 was last week. What did we solve by last week? We solved by. GCF, which is a type of factoring. Beautiful. So we did all factoring. Your quiz has eight questions on Thursday. Eight questions and five are factoring. So if you cannot factor, it's not going to be good. So we spent three or four days last week. I think it was three days on factoring. I'm after school today and Wednesday if you can't factor. We're going to use some factoring today in the method that we're learning today. So factoring will definitely creep up and kind of stab you in the back when you're not looking if you're not careful. Make sure you know how to factor. It was GCF factoring. There was trinomials, two different types, and there was binomials, difference of squares. So those are our four types of factoring. So just make sure you get caught up. Now in factoring, what do the equations have to always be equal to? Zero. But when we go to completing the square or solving by square root method, it's okay that this is not a zero. So that messes with my mind. I want to always put them equal to zero, always put them equal to zero, but that's going to actually mess me up. If I'm going to use a square root method, I can just leave it the way it is. It's actually ready to go. So with square root method, I don't have to have it equal to zero. Is everybody okay with that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to the left-hand side, and I'm going to see what I can do over there. The left-hand side is a trinomial. Ooh, if I say trinomial, what do you think of from the factoring section? Trinomial, it triggers make a, make a table. So on the left in this method, we're going to make a table every single time. We're going to look at the left and we're going to use the AC method. So this is a trinomial, there's three of them. And then Troy, what would it have to multiply to if we use the AC method? It has to multiply to four. So anybody who's not caught up on the factoring, this is the A. This is the B, this is the C, thank you, Troy. And so multiplies to four and adds to the B. What's the B value? Negative four. The nice thing about this square root method is we're using it because it just works out perfectly. Because what do we notice is here, we have a perfect square. So it's always gonna be two of exactly the same number. So if you get stuck in the four is something other than a four, a bigger number, uh, 400, um, I don't know, 169, 196, something we don't know, you can just go over to your calculator and you can square root this number and it will help you a little bit. What's the square root of four? Because four is two times two. Does two times two multiply to four? Yes. Does it add to negative four? No. How can we make it add to negative four? Make it a negative two times a negative two. Good, Zai King and everybody else. There was a lot of participation there. Good. So I just found the magic numbers, and now I'm going to factor it. When I factor it, what would be the two parentheses? Want to give it a try, Christian B? What would be the two parentheses? I found the magic numbers. What would be the two parentheses when I factor just the left-hand side of this trinomial? So X minus 2, and what would be the next one? Hmm, how are you getting that? So when I have the magic numbers right here, I put an X in both of the parentheses, and both of them get a negative 2. So I'm factoring on the left. Are you back up to okay? That makes sense now? So I'm factoring the left-hand side. And they're always going to be the same in this method. Does anybody know another way to write it if I say x minus 2 times x minus 2? First period, got it. What's another way to write this? Yeah, nice job. x minus 2 squared. We're going to use a square root method in just a little bit, so that's going to always be the case. 
When we're using the square root method, we'll always be able to make it be the exact two same factors. That's why we can take this method. Maybe it's not good by factoring. Maybe there's, if I move the 25 over, it wouldn't factor. I don't know. We're not going to go there. So we're going to go on over and we're going to see that we've all set up for square root method. How do I get rid of the squared? I square root. So I can square root both sides. This is the math magic. We've done this before in the I section because the square root and the squared cancel. Now we have an X minus 2. And what's on the other side of the equation when I square root that 25? 5. Good. Anybody remember something, though? Whenever I decide to square root, I've got to add a... Some of you forgot it on the test. Plus or minus, yeah. So we always have to add a plus or minus whenever we decide to square root. You guys are a little quiet. Um, Jaden, how are we doing it? Okay. You guys are with me? Okay. It's just a Monday morning, isn't it? So we're going to go ahead and add a plus or minus. Connor, are you still with me? We're going to set up two equations. The two equations will be an x minus 2 equals a positive 5. Anybody want to take a, a chance? What's the second equation? x minus 2 equals a negative 5. So we take this plus and minus and we split it up so that we can now solve for x. What are we going to do to solve for x on the first one? We're going to add 2 to both sides. Good. And what are we going to do for the second one? Same thing. But we're going to get different results when we add 2 on both of the purple equations. So if I go on over to this one and I add 2, x equals 7. Beautiful. And if I add 2 on this one, x equals negative 3. Beautiful. Nice job. Uh, good. Any questions for me? So the reason we're using this method, because in a perfect world, this works perfectly. So if you read the directions and it says square root method, think I don't get it equal to zero. It's okay. There's a number on the other side. I can just factor right away. Is that king? Um, no, no, we always, this is a new lesson for today. Um, we've been solving by factoring, so if there was a zero on this side, you know, change it a little bit, but um, no, this is a little bit different because we're using that square rooting. When we did all last week, we factored them and just set them equal. We didn't have any square rooting last week, so that's kind of the difference here. Now, what are you going to know to do the difference on the quiz I came? is five of them are going to say use factoring. That's GCF. That's make a table. That's uh, the binomials. That's everything we did last week. These are going to say use square root method. Go ahead and try the second one. Exactly. Because we're not square rooting in that form. Good. So Emily made a good point. I'm going close to the computer so the people at home can hear it. So she said, it's not equal to zero. So I understand I'm using this method, but I'm not going to put a plus and minus uh, last week, but I put a plus and minus this week. Yes, the plus and minus comes from choosing to square root. When you square root, you'll always get a plus or minus. So go ahead and try one, and I'll walk around and see if anyone else has questions. Logan, well, what's your question? Oh, yeah, you can always go to the bathroom. Okay, I'll come around and see where you guys are at. Good. Start with factoring on the left. It's okay. It's not equal to zero. I wouldn't move too far. I would have to do the thing. Yeah, that's perfect. Good. Yeah. Yeah, good setup. Good. Yeah, good. Now, if you want to skip the red step and go straight to the green, that's okay. I don't do, do the red step usually. You know, I know it's going to be able to be written to the second power. Yeah, you're like one step away. Nice job. That was really good. You came in ready to work today. Good. I wasn't sure if you were with me. I'm so glad. Yeah, I started okay. Sorry. Yeah, I think you're on the wrong page, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll do this one as a U try. I don't know why I didn't write U try. It's a really good U try. Yeah, this is beautiful. This is so good. Oh my gosh, the kids were doing really good in this section. Okay, I don't see anyone that doesn't know how to start. Does anybody not know how to start? Yeah, perfect. If you want to rip out page 171 while you're waiting for me. Yeah, so in this form, I'll push up just a little. 
Um, you're going to just kind of ignore that 169 to get started. It says square root method, so it's okay. You can factor the left. Multiplies to 49 and adds to 14. This is the 1 and the 49. We call it the AC method and adds to the B. Kids sometimes like this method because they can see the numbers rather easily. It's 7 times 7. Now you can write it as x plus 7 and x plus 7 again, but I saw some people skipping some steps, and I'm totally okay with that. I've got bananas up here if anybody wants a banana. Um, I think these look perfect. This is like how I like my bananas to look. But these are just extra from the track events of, um, on Saturday. So we had like 12 bananas. I'm like, we'll never eat 12 bananas. If anybody wants one, you can just pop up and grab it. I've got two left. So some people are going to go ahead and just write this as x plus 7 to the second. Now I'm teaching with the banana and I know I'm a minion. And then from there, I can square root both sides. After teaching this for probably at least 12 years, because this is an Algebra 2 concept, this isn't taught really in Algebra 1, or not always in Algebra 1. We never used to teach it. They put completing the square in there now, but I bet you a lot of teachers don't teach it. When you square root the 169, maybe you don't know 169. What number was it, guys? Did anybody get it? It was what? It was 13. Did you know that, or did you have to use your calculator? It does not matter. Use the calculator. But don't forget the plus or minus. Yeah. I have no idea how it magically changed to a 2. I'm shocked it needs to go back to bed. My kitty was even meowing at me this morning. Meow, meow. I was like, I know you want me to come back to bed. We have uh, four cats, and one of my cats is always like, meow, meow, come back to bed. I'm like, I want to. I'm sorry. I can't. So it should be a 7. Thank you so much. And then take the time to set up two equations. I'll see kids get to here, and then they make silly, silly mistakes because they try to rush this. The other thing is they make one of the 7s positive and the other negative. The sign change or the um, plus or minus is on the 13, so be careful. Minus 7 from both sides. Your first answer should be 6. And your second answer should be what? Negative 20. Are there any questions about that one? We're going to have a couple things happen on the next page. So stick with it. We've got two more to do together. And then I've got you six homework problems. I'm shortening the homework. And then um, first period, you got 20 minutes to start homework. So they should all be pretty much done. Mm -hmm. Is everybody okay to move on? We're going to do page 171. If you want to circle them or something, um, Christian, we're going to do numbers one and two. Nope. I was pausing so you could circle. And then 14 through 17. Okay. Nobody else wants a banana? I have a couple bananas there if anybody's hungry. Yeah. Page 171. We'll do numbers one and two. I just gave you the example you missed by being in the bathroom. No, you're fine. You're not bad. And se uh, seven, I just forgot. Sorry. <laughs> it's like, it, it was there a minute, 14 through 17. Isn't that funny how you like just said it and then you're like, I don't remember what I just said. Everybody else does that too, right? Yeah, there's the homework. I do want you guys to come along for two more or the homework's going to be a little confusing. I'm doing a little teacher pause for anyone who doesn't have the notes. Okay, the shaft looks exactly the same. If it's not equal to zero, you pull that's okay. It'll be okay. We see that we're going to use square root method. Okay, I'm going to look on the left-hand side. I look on the left-hand side and I see it's a trinomial. And when I see that it's a trinomial, I can go ahead and factor it. So I'm going to factor this side. Vanessa, what does it have to multiply to? Let me get Vanessa on this one, guys. What does it have to multiply to? What number? It's the A times the C. So what does it have to multiply to? 144. And what does it have to add to then? To 24. Good. Does anybody already know two numbers that multiply to 144 and add to 24? Go ahead, Jaden. 12. 12 times 12. And if you don't know that, you can just go on over. 
and you can put it into your calculator. That's totally fine. Nice job. So he probably knows his perfect squares better than some. That's okay. We've got a tool for that. You know. That's 12 times 12. 12 plus 12 gave me 24, so he was right. I didn't even have to play around with the signs. Those are called my magic numbers in Shafton's class. <laughs> and now we're going to go ahead and factor. Waylon, what would be my factors? Good. So how do I write it as factors? Can you write? Good, good. So x plus 12 and x plus 12, both in a parentheses. Beautifully done. And then there's another way to write that. What do you think, um, Juan? How could I write this a little differently? X plus 12 squared. Good. You'll have to see your smile, too. I know I'm not torturing you completely. And now we've got squared on, on the left-hand side. So, Isaac, how would you go ahead and solve if it's squared? How do we undo this, too? I feel like I'm missing the joke in that corner of the room. That's okay. The joke isn't me, right? I don't have, like, a big booger hanging on my nose or something. Would you tell me if I did? No, probably not. Huh? I've gone home, and I'll have, like, a black thing in my tooth, and nobody's told me all day. I'm like, hmm, not nice people. Or I'll have marker on my forehead. <laughs> um, I stalled for you. What are you going to do to solve? You don't know? How do you get rid of a squared? Hmm. We're going to square root it. <laughs> so whenever you see this squared, Isaac, I'm so glad I called on you. You're going to square root it, and that gets whatever in that parentheses out. And then, ooh, 196. This is why we're falling into a different thing here. Second square root is one. It is 192. Is 192 a perfect square? No. So we're going to probably put it in our calculator, and that's okay. What did you guys get when you put it in your calculator? Eight square roots of three, beautiful. And what do we still have to remember in front of that eight square roots of three? Plus or minus. Oh, wait a second, should I add an I? No, why not? Because it's not negative. Really good, good. Someone in the last class wanted to add an I. So we're not to the I's yet, but they're coming back. So this breaking down the radical really confuses kids. Sometimes it's a perfect square and it's a nice five or it's a 49 and it's a nice seven. But in this case, it's a, a 192, which when you square root it, it's kind of ugly there. It was 64 times 3 if you're trying to do those without a calculator. Okay, last step to get x alone. Last step to get x alone. How do I get x alone? Minus 12. So I'm going to minus 12, and this is where it gets confusing. This is why we're doing one more. Can I minus the 12 from the 8, mathematically? I cannot. So this is going to look very uncomfortable for a lot of students because they feel like they should be able to take it further. But that is the most exact answer. When you minus the 12 from the other side, the negative 12 cannot be added or subtracted with the 8. They are not like terms. The 8 is connected to the 3. So it writes like this. This is the real part, this is the irrational part over my irrational shirt today. I get a lot of negative fours here. Do you see how people might think it's negative four? They might be negative 12 plus eight. So if anybody thought negative four. There's a way to separate it up just to make you stronger as you move into SAT, ACT, PSAT, all those wonderful tests. They could write the answer like this also, and it would be completely fine. Just so you know, that's the same thing. How do you guys feel? Any questions for me? Okay, they're going to make it one step harder. This is our last example of the day. I'll give you a little bit of time to get there. Go ahead and copy it. My class is like, I'm done, but I don't want to make it tighter with my teeth. I'm trying not to be tempted to bite this. I've chipped my tooth before doing that, so. But my keys keep falling off the slam there. Okay, let's go a little bit further. Um, what do you see that's happening differently here? Um, Josh, do you see something different about number three right from the start? Negative 72. So he noticed there's a negative on the other side. I agree with him on that. What do you think? Anybody else notice something different? 
it makes it really, really hard. So when I multiply the A and the C, it's going to be like 2,116. So I'm not going to do that to you. What are we always supposed to check for first with all of these problems? What's our always our first check? GCF. Does this problem have a GCF? Yeah, it has a GCF. So I King and um, Juan, let's stop talking. We're going to go through this one. So we're looking for a GCF. What's the GCF that you're going to divide out? They all divide by 2. You want to divide by 2. If you don't divide by 2, what's going to happen is you're going to have to multiply the 2 with the 1,058, like M was saying. And we'd be looking for what multiplies to 2,116 and adds to negative 92. Nobody wants that chore. So we go ahead and we make things easier by GCFing. When we GCF, um, William, what will be left after I divide everything by 2? If I divide by 2 right here, what do we get left in the first term? To the? Good. And you're going to need a calculator probably. Negative 92 divided by 2. When you get there. Negative 46x. Good. And then 1,058 divided by 2. 529. And don't forget about the 72. Equals negative 36. No, no, you're not going to like this, but the 2 doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> I can multiply any equation by any number. I could multiply every equation in the whole world by 5. I could multiply them all by negative 7. It doesn't change my answer. So the 2 does not matter to me anymore. I'm going to focus on what's here. And now I'm going to go ahead and use my method. So when I look at the left-hand side, I still notice it's a trinomial. I'm going to say multiplies and adds. And so, um, Ben, what would it have to multiply to for this problem with the underlined red area? Whoa, 529? Ooh, that's a big number. And what does it have to add to? Ooh, negative 46. Okay. Well, this is square root method. So I might not use the table button, if 529 divided by x, I might use the square root button. 529 is a perfect square. Does anybody know what times what gives you 529? 23. How'd you get that so easily? Nice job. Okay. Did you use the calculator, though? Oh, you were just trial and error? Wow. Okay. That's pretty intelligent. Yeah. Um, a lot of us are just going to use the tool. We're just going to do second square root of 529. So I think Zyking, were you doing like 22 times 22, 21 times 21? Yeah, okay, yeah. So he was just trying it on his calculator, and that's what he would do if he didn't have to do my calculator. Um, but the square root of 529 is 23 times 23. But wait a second, 23 times 23, does that add to negative 46? I need two negatives, really good. So they both have to be negative. And for those of you getting confused, if I take a negative 23 plus a negative 23, oh, okay, I get it now. But if I take a negative times a negative, oh, okay, that also works. So really good. Let's change it to a factored form. Uh, let's see if I can get Sherilyn on that. What are the two factors now, Sher uh, Sherilyn? Good. What's the other one? No, no, no. They're both. Um, they're both gonna be the same. So yeah, they're both gonna be the same. Yeah, good. And then um, Logan, how could I write that differently, Logan H? How could I write this in another way? For this section, we want to be able to use square root methods. So if we have x minus 23 and x minus 23, what's another way to write it? No, go ahead, Josh. x minus 23 squared. We want to use square root methods, so think about writing it as squared. And then, Lynn, what do I do to start to solve this? <laughs> A square root both sides. And Lynn says, but Shackton, watch out. Don't forget the plus or minus. Good. But, oh, wait a second. What else do you guys notice? There's a negative. What's the negative represent? I. Oh, the I's are coming back. Yes, they are. So if I go ahead and I take the I out, which represents the negative, um, and I'll, uh, what would be my number next to the I? <laughs> That's okay. 
kind of just like that king. And so if we go ahead and we know it's six, and he's Mr. Human Calculator over there today. So for anyone that doesn't know how he's getting that, he's going to go ahead. We're going to put that in the calculator. Remember, I can't put the negative in the calculator, so my brain needs to know the negative is the I. Now, when we go to this quiz, this is the answers I get. But this isn't the answer. I need to go ahead and get the X by itself. So what's the last step to isolate X? I'm going to add plus 23. Good. Um, we did for the last one, we minus 12. If we went back up there, we did minus 12 on the last one. The first two, what was the difference? On the right-hand side, they were perfect squares. So there was no radical, right? And that's where people get confused. Um, Emma was doing a really good job of pointing out the differences. She said, well, why didn't we do this on this one? We did. We minus the 12. We just didn't have an I, right? So that's the only difference. On this one, we're going to have, ooh, can I add a 23 and a 6I? No, that's like putting people together that shouldn't be together. That usually ends in a divorce. So 23 cannot get with the I. They're like different families. Don't put them together. One is an imaginary part and one is a real part. Huh? One's fantasy and one's reality. Yeah, yeah. So that is what our answer would be. But let's go back to that first page for just a second to understand how M is getting to the point that she's seeing all three differences. She's seeing sometimes she's getting eyes, sometimes she's getting radicals, sometimes she's going to get eyes with radicals even. And then they have real parts next to them. But on the front, notice our numbers underneath were perfect squares. So we split it into two equations. Perfect square, split it into two equations. So it's really good that she's seeing what to do where, because both of those types will be on there. There'll be two from today on the, on the quiz on Thursday. So our quiz is when? Thursday. And guess what I added in? Wednesday, there is not a new lesson. So Wednesday is just a full day of review. And then there'll be a review sheet. The homework, I just shortened it. So you don't have to do three through six. So I got rid of four problems for you. So that's kind of nice. If you want to try three through six, because I didn't you know, um, engage you enough or give you enough rigor today, you could try three through six. They're worked out in the key. Um, but we'll just cut those because they're not on the quiz or on the test. So we'll do numbers 1 and 2 and 14 through 17. If I could go back in time, I would have included 18. I'll make that change for next year. But you guys can just do 14, 15, 16, 17. It's six problems. That's not bad. And a lot of kids finished. Do you guys have any questions for me? Before we go into homework, can everybody, everybody, everybody give me a 4, 3, 2, 1. 4, I can keep you. You can teach my next class. 3, you're going to be no problem starting on your own. 2, you're fuzzy. 1, you have no idea, and I'm going to come sit next to you. Okay, good. Okay, we got a couple twos. Okay, cool. Okay. 2.5. Okay, that works. We can work in decimals. We're math class. At least a two.